We are Paradise Now Church, 7th of the 2nd. We're nosing in to the 2nd month of 2021, the year of fun. And we're all having fun. A few of the brethren went bowling yesterday and uh, roller skating and they had tremendous fun. The Lord don't want us to be miserable people. He wants us to be joy-filled people. And wherever we go, we take that word with us. You might just come across someone that might be out there wanting to have fun and they've got all sorts of baggage and all sorts of problems they just can't unload. You know what I mean? And the Lord does call us to be rubbish tins. That's what he wants. He wants us to be rubbish tins. People can come along, put all their rubbish and get it off their chest, you know. I've copped it for 34 years. This June on the street, you're this, you're that, blah, 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 blah. Just let them go. That's it. That's the shot. Nearly empty, you know, 70%, 60. They dump it all, then they turn around and they might say, like, sorry about that, I didn't mean to say that. Hey, it's all good. You know, the job's been done. Are we going to move on? Are we going to go on to the next step? What's going on around us? Well, good to see Brother Paul here today visiting. And uh, destructive fires. We just deal with these things that are going on around us. Before we go into the message. Destructive fires in WA. Flash floods drowning Brisbane up the east coast. I mean, Australia is known for diverse weather conditions, but in the last, I would say, a definite five years, half a decade, it's just unprecedented, you know. The weather changes are unprecedented. And when we read the scriptures, especially the um, writings of Matthew, we see there that... Uh, these are all signs of the Lord's coming. Right? Even eating and drinking, marrying, giving, giving in marriage, eating, drinking and marriage. They're the priorities on the television today. They're the priorities that people, they're all on about wine, they're all on about food, it's all restaurants and this and Master chef and my kitchen rules and it's worldwide and marriage has got all the shows on marriage at first lust and sex at first sight and sex in the city all sorts of things going on related I think that's marriage marriage is, is not about you Marriage is about servitude. It's not about you. It's about you serving. It's about the, the, the other part serving. The male and the female serving each other. Complementing. Complementing each other. But a lot of people don't understand that. They just think it's a one-way street. It, nothing works like that. No friendships, no marriage, nothing. It's a one-way street. Especially our relationship with Jesus. No, it's not a one-way street. If anything, it's all, all His way. Because He is the way. And a lot of people don't want to do that. They don't want to, they want to keep certain parts of the past in their sentimental uh, box. But the Lord tells us to get rid of that Forget the former things. I do a new thing. Forget it. It's of no use dwelling on the past. It's of no use. You're just dragging yourself down and tormenting yourself. You know, if I was to dwell on the past, oh, it would be Linda Ronstead day and night. Poor, poor, pitiful me. You know? But I don't bother. I, I, that's gone. You ain't going to change one dot. You're not going to change the past. You're not going to change yesterday. It's gone. 
If you sowed good seed yesterday, you can look forward to a good harvest. If you sowed bad seed yesterday, you can look forward to a bad harvest. Amen? So, Prime Minister Scott Morrison, uh, they said during the week on the news that Scobro is leading the nation to salvation through vaccination. <laughs> I thought that was a bit lame, you know. And I thought, you know, uh, he's a he's a uh, Hillsong member, and we got Brother Paul. He lives over over that way where Hillsong is, but he's not at Hillsong, is he? He's here. And I thought, well, surely he would have had the conscience to make. Uh, make it public that he doesn't believe salvation comes through vaccination. Surely. But he didn't. You know? And then, of course, you've got the lifesavers at the beach, uh, Queensland lifesavers, do a great job. They do a great job. And, and they deserve all the support they can get. And one of my favourites is the uh, seeing eye dogs, the blind that's a wonderful uh, society, that one. But they're not going to save you. you know? Salvation is not there. They can help. They can help the blind go for a walk and get out, get around. They can take someone out of the water and save them so they can sin more. But only Jesus can save the soul from the fires of hell. Soul meaning mind, will and emotion. We know that we still have our faculties about us if we go to hell or heaven because the Bible says the rich man was crying out in, in hell and he was crying out wanting a drop of water. He was, he was thirsty. He just wanted a drop of water. He wanted more than that when he was on terra firma. But now he's crying out for a drop of water. But he still didn't want to surrender to the word, see? He was crying out to Abraham, Father Abraham. He was religious. He might have been Anglican. He might have been Church of England. Well, Church of England and Anglican are the same. In England, it's Church of England. In Australia, it's Anglican. Same um, stew. <laughs> same stew. But he's still religious, saying trying to tell Abraham how things are going to be. Now, this is what we're going to do. You know, when you read about the rich man and Lazarus and Abraham just shut him down totally and said, listen, it's not going to happen. It, forget it. It's not going to happen. You've got the, you got the law and the prophets, meaning the word. And if you ain't going to surrender to the word of God, i got no hope and nor have you. There's no hope of being saved from the fires to come, or the rock to come, or Satan, our own wicked self, no hope. So, Scobro uh, from Hillsong, he, Prime Minister Morrison, let it go. He didn't jump in there and say, listen, you know, and, and uh, put in a, um, uh, put, set things right and put a disclaimer in. He didn't say that. He just let it ride all over the news everywhere, brother. He let it ride all over the news everywhere. And what do people think about that? I mean, there has to be a definite line drawn. There has to be a definite standard made clear. Hey? If the watchman doesn't blow the trumpet correctly, hey, how are they going to prepare for war? How are we going to know if the watchman doesn't blow the trumpet? A minister, whether it's prime minister or a minister in a church, is a watchman. And he's watching out for the souls of everyone in the congregation. Right? And, and sometimes they may think the minister's a bit harsh. When he sees someone, you know, they've had a long night or they might have done night shift. And they're dozing off. And you have to say, well, you can stand up 
in the naughty corner or you can go out and sign. That's up to you. But it's just putting things straight, that's all, to have respect for those surrounding you and for the Lord and for the minister. Amen? That old devil, look, we can be so close but yet so far away. The old devil, he, you know, a, a last resort, he will have you go to a church that even speaks the truth and have you doze off. You know what I mean? And then the minister's the bad wolf, the big bad wolf, because he says, excuse me, you can go and sit outside. Hey? But he, he loves that person. He wants them to hear the good news of the glad tidings of goodly things. Amen. <laughs> Someone say amen, please. Amen. Yeah. You can say oh my or why. I'm going to say hallelujah. Israel Folau. I mean, a lot of people think he's Christian. I mean, we don't call ourselves Christian because there's too many Christians that aren't Christians. It's a word used like love. You know, I love you. Oh, really? Okay. And when did that happen? <laughs> I love you. So we don't use the word Christian because everyone I come across, I meet a lot of people daily on streets for decades and they're Christian. I'm Christian too. All oh, right. And what church do you go to? Oh, I'm with the Bar High. Oh, all right. Okay, yeah. oh, I'm Roman Catholic. Well, why would you be saying you're Christian if you're Roman Catholic? I don't get it, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to process it. Never the twain will meet. Never the twain will meet. The religion and righteousness. Jesus wasn't religious, Jesus was righteous. That's why they hung him up. If you're walking in righteousness, They'll want to hang you up. Get rid of him. Excuse me. Get rid of him. He's going to bring us undone. Hang him up. He's going to blow the whistle. So they hung Jesus up. Amen. <laughs> Gee, we might have to put some more chairs outside today. We have some, a lot of sleepy joes here today. I'll give it, a, give it a while and then I'll just have to start pointing fingers. The Lord Jesus, the, the Lord Jesus, he wants us, he wants us to know the truth. Because it's the only thing that sets us free. The truth about you about me the truth about God and the truth about the world and the truth about the devil if you can get the truth on those you're laughing you're halfway there living on a prayer eh? so the truth is Israel Folau if you, want, if you want to use that word Christian he's not a Christian because he has another Jesus and that Jesus is actually Father. And that Jesus is Jesus. And that Jesus is Holy Ghost. So he has a oneness Jesus. Now, the Bible doesn't talk about a oneness Jesus. The Bible talks about the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost. And here's Israel Folau wanting to come back into the NRL, into the uh, Illawarra Shorthorns, in, into the, the Red V Dragons. He wants to come back and play for them and create havoc there. But they knocked him back and they said, no, nah, sorry, it's not going to happen. Now, I have to ask the question that a couple of years ago he was blabbing how much he loved Jesus well, why is he still playing football? He's a multi-millionaire. Look, is the man a tightwad or what? 
He needs to spend that money because he could die tomorrow. And you know what I'd spend it on, don't you? It wouldn't be a Lamborghini. It'd be the Word of God. I'd make sure I got the message into every letterbox in Australia. That would be just starters. I get my testimony into every letterbox in Australia to start with. My booklet. And then I'd go from there to score some radio time daily. And then I'd go from there for television time daily. In between then, if I had the money Israel Falau had, I'll be holding meetings daily. And lovely air conditioned venues. Now that would be just the starting blocks. After that, then I'd consider the natural. People who can't pay their bills. People who are going to be cast out of their rented house. People who need a car and don't have a car and need it for work. That would come second. According to the new covenant, Jesus verse people second amen so um, it doesn't add up Mr. Falau and praise God he's not doing those things because he's got another Jesus so he'd only be spreading a false doctrine Jesus is Jesus Father is Father Holy Ghost is Holy Ghost And it ain't going to change for nobody. Amen? Amen. Isn't that wonderful? You can put your hand up if you agree. Yeah, we've got a few. Yeah, we've got a few there. Let's go into the message today. We're going to be reading out of Corinthians. If you don't have a Bible, you can sit next to someone, um, Brother Blade. You might like to sit next to um, Brother Paul there. Yeah. Yeah, I hate him. Okay. And we're going to read out of Corinthians today. And we're going to read from 2 Corinthians 5. And we're going to start in verse 12. For we do not commend ourselves again to you. But give you opportunity to boast on our behalf. That you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge thus. That if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves. But for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God. Who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus. And has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ. 
reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their sins to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him through him. Amen? There's a lot there. But we're going to concentrate on verse, let's say, verse 15. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them. And... Who died for them and rose again. So we are in a series. This is our 61st part. We've had 61 messages where we started with one message and then the Holy Ghost expounded and expounded and our message started initially with the fear of the Lord the fear of the Lord we said the fear of the Lord we've well established the fear of the Lord is to love God the fear of the Lord is to hate evil the fear of the Lord is to obey God the fear of the Lord is to respect God Things will go well if we respect God. Right? If we don't respect God, things will not go well. That's for sure. So, last week our message was love Him more. Because we started off with love Him. We're in the L. Fear of the Lord. L-O-R-D-L. Love Him was the first message there. And then it was uh, love Him more last week. And this week it is with a holy yell. They cried more, more, more. With a holy yell. There was a holy yell around the Jericho wall and they shouted. They shouted at them. With a holy yell, they cried more, more, more. In the midnight hour, they cried, Lord, 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 Lord. With a holy yell. There's a fire burning in my bones. I cannot hold it back. The fire is the word of God. My word is a fire. My word is a hammer. His word is not a a feather and a marshmallow. God's word, Jeremiah 23, 29, my word is a fire. My word is a hammer. It doesn't say my word is a fire sometimes. My word is a hammer sometimes. No, no. Always a fire, always a hammer. Amen? And people come to the Lord and they're all... I I see it like an old broken down car coming down the driveway. And they finally stop and... And I look at it and I say, Lord, do you really want me to pedal beat this thing? With the hammer (laughs) of the word? Like, or will I just torch it with the fire of the word? (laughs) Which one? He said, don't worry about it. I'm going to make it brand new. 
You make me feel brand new. I'm going to make a brand spanking new vehicle. Plastic's still on the door. Manual of Emmanuel in the glove box. In case you need to sort something with the vehicle. We're new creatures, new vehicles. We're not patched up, second hand, restored. It's new. Let's read it. 2 Corinthians 5.15 Hey? Better still, make that 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new vehicle. A new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. See? Is it any wonder we cry more, more, more? Because our primary verse here today was 15. Remember? Verse 15, 2 Corinthians 5, 15. And he died for all that those who, were, who live should live no longer to themselves. But for him who died for them and rose again. Last week, Remember? Love him more. And then we're going to deconstruct the word more. And that's what we're going to do this week. Deconstruct the word M-O-R-E. It's a big, big job this one. How are we going to love him more? M-O-R-E. Well, we, we read it in verse 15. To start with, we cry more. We want more. Of Jesus, we want to do more for Jesus. What can I do? You can live for Him who died for you. You can live for Him. No longer live for yourself, but you can live for Him who died for you the cruel death upon the tree. Hey, and even then, you cry for more. Myself. Knowing the depths of Satan in my past life. When I came to Jesus, I cried more, more, more. I want to know more. I, I want to do more. I, I, I want to give more. I, want, it, I just wanted more, 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 more. So he, he showed me how to play guitar. He showed me how to write songs. He showed me how to sing. He showed me how... To do everything in the ministry. No man taught me. Because I was one that just wanted more, 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 more. Surely I could do something more. I'm not doing enough. I just can't. I want to do more to glorify Jesus. He says, well, the scriptures say that a little drop of wine, a little drop of wine... It's not bad for medicinal purposes. I said, I'm going to do more, Jesus. I'm not going to touch alcohol. Because I was once an alcoholic, brother. I was once, a <laughs> I was once an alcoholic. Therefore, I'll show people the power of God to deliver a man that was once totally, fully reliant daily on alcohol and cigarettes and could never stop swearing filthy language. I'm going to show the people more about God, that he has the power to do anything you let him do. You let him do. And say so he can't do it. He can change any homo. He can change pedophiles. He can change thieves, liars, drunks, murderers, rapists. He can do anything because he said so. He said he came to set the captive free. Not one captive, the captive. Come to set him free. And if the Son of God has set you free, you're going to be free indeed. Amen? New creature, new vehicle. <clears throat> Not chugging smoke out the back and the tyres are flat and the dings all over it and the bonnet won't close. The windows won't wind up. 
None of that garbage. This is slick material. I'm talking saint. Saint. Oh, well, you can't be a saint. Let, you know, the Pope canonizes you. I don't find that in the Bible either. I find that saints are those who follow Jesus. Paul wrote to the saints in Corinth, the saints in Ephesus, the saints in Galatia, the saints, the saints, the saints, the saints, the saints. Didn't say he wrote to the Roman Catholics saying, and the Roman Catholics, you have to die before you can become a saint. <laughs> so why is Paul writing to the dead? Hello? He's not writing to the dead, he's writing to the living. Saints, brethren, brothers, holy brethren, brother. I'm just sign signifying brother there to go. Tap, tap. Whoa. <laughs> so we're going on with the fear of the Lord. More, more, more. We want more. I want more. I want to do more. Not necessarily deeds, but I want to do more. I, I, I want the Lord to shine more through me in everything. The Lord shining through Sister Jovi when she bought herself equipment to do shirts and to display Jesus' name and contacts on the shirt and people come to me all the time in the shopping centres I like your shirt and then I get opportunity to minister to them I say well if you like the shirt you're going to like this brochure have a read but be sure to check everything, all scriptures on the brochure with the Bible. And then ring me and tell me I'm a liar if I'm a liar. Otherwise, whatever holds you peace. Everyone said? Amen. Amen. So we're going to deconstruct. I don't know if we're going to get to this again today. But there's a few more things to be said on the, um, deconstructing the word more. With a holy yell, more, 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 more of the Lord. More is living for the Lord, living for the Christ. Hallelujah. What about 1 Corinthians? Can we go there in 1 Corinthians 13? 1 Corinthians 13. We'll have a look there. One Corinthians thirteen six it says, "Love does not rejoice in sin, but rejoices in the truth." There's more. There's more. That's more you can do. You can rejoice in the truth. Hey, that's what God's love has enabled me. I tell you what, in the world I didn't rejoice in the truth at times. I dreaded it because I didn't want to be caught out. Hey? But now there's nothing to hide. The devil has nothing to work with. We've got to make sure the devil's got nothing to work with. you got nothing on you. Then what's he going to do? He's going to run away. He's going to run away because he found, finds no place in you. That's not easy because hab habits, habits continue, continue, continue. Hard to break. But we know that Jesus already broke the bad habits. So we can't say, as the world can't help myself bad habits I'm running wild we can't say that anymore because he's not asking you to help yourself he's asking you to let him help you he's asking you to give permission for him 
to deliver you. Amen? Amen. Someone sitting in a cage and they're handcuffed and they become mentally disturbed and you go there and say, hey, I've got the keys. Do you want me to open it up? No, leave me here. Leave me here. I want to stay in my sin. Oh, don't say tell it's talking that truth to me. I don't want to hear your garbage. Well, go to hell. Go to hell. If that's where you want to go, you go to hell. But I'm not going there. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want my worst enemy to go to hell. Hey? I want to go to heaven. That's not my aim, but that's not my, that I would go to heaven. That's not what's driving me. It's, it's the, the reality that Jesus loved me so much to think of me, to deliver me from the chains I was in. That's it. And you've got these people in churches everywhere. They just don't want to go to hell. That's really not loving God, yet still on the loving self bit. You're still putting yourself first. Amen? Hallelujah. So, we've got to get honest, haven't we? We're going to deconstruct the word more. So what about um, what about um, we go to the writings of Acts. Let's have a look there. Acts 13. Acts Acts 13. And we're going to read Acts 13 in verse 21. See what it says there. And after, afterward, they asked for a king. So God gave them Saul the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin for 40 years. And when he had removed him, he raised up for them David as king, to whom also he gave this testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart who will do all my will. With a holy yell, they cried more, more, more. Hey? Now that M in more, M-O-R-E, the M stands for most. Most of all. Most. Hey? When we love God, we love Him most of all. We love Him more than our mother, sister, brother, wife, children. We love Him most of all. And the report and testimony of King David that he was after God's heart he wasn't after fulfilling the desires of his own heart. He wanted God's heart. He wanted so much to do the will of God, to please God. Acts 13, verse 22. And when he had removed the king, Saul, moved him out of the way, Because he wasn't faithful. He wasn't loyal. 
He raised up, he raised up for them. David never went to a king Bible college. He never learnt to be a king. These are God appointed appointments. God appointed appointments. You don't learn to be a prime minister or a king or a queen or a preacher. You don't learn that. It's it's given. God says who will be who in the zoo and everyone says. I usually find proud people just, I'm going to go to Bible college and I'm going to be this and I'm going to be that. Warning bells go off. Warning bells go off when I hear that. Stay clear of that one. There's a a health hazard. Pride's in the district. Pride's in the district. You know that? Pride's in the district. 22, and when he had removed him, God appoints and God removes. Right? Even though he anointed Saul, he removed the anointed Saul. Someone say amen. Amen. Oh, I'm anointed. He can still remove you. And when he had removed him, he raised up for them David as king. To whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart who will do all my will. That's what the Lord wants. The Lord loves that. You know, some people do the will of God, but not all of it. There's still one thing left. He said to the rich young ruler, there's still one thing you haven't done. Oh, but I didn't, I've kept the law, I've done this, I've done that. But there's still one thing. Who will do all my will. Hey? King David. And Jesus came out of that seed, so to speak, out of that lineage. Hey? Jesus was known as the Davidical son. David. Jesus! The blind man cried out, Jesus! Son of David! Have mercy on me! He turned around and he said, What? Does thou want us that I may see? No problem. He found me bleeding and dying on the Jericho Road, but he poured out the oil and the wine. He poured out the oil and the wine, the kind that restores my soul. He found me bleeding and dying. On the Jericho road, but he poured out the oil and the wine. The oil is the Holy Ghost, and the wine is the Word of God. He found me bleeding and dying on the Jericho road, and he poured out the oil and the wine. More, what can I do? What can I do for you, Lord? It was Paul the Apostle on the Damascus Road. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Not what I'm going to do for you. What I think, what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to do this for you and that for you. I'm going to build buildings. I'm going to build uh, synagogues. I'm going to build uh, cathedrals. No, Jesus never asked you to do that. He never asked anyone to do that. Show me. Show me where an apostle built a building or a cathedral. Not there. I wonder why. Because in him we live and move and have our being. 
That's what sets us apart. It, it's symbolic of being a pilgrim and a sojourner passing through. Passing through. Pilgrims, sojourners, passing through. Hey, ragtag followers of Jesus, the motley crew. Hey? With a holy yell, they cried, more, more, more. Can't get enough of him, so to speak. There's a saying in most churches, um, get, you know, I, I, I want to be closer to Jesus. You know, you really can't get any closer than knowing him. Once you're born again, that's it. He's indwelling. You can't get any closer than that. He's closer than your wife. Your wife can't live in here. That's an impossibility. Only God can live within. He lives, he lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. So, most of all, right? David was the most of all, after God's own heart, willing to do all that God says. Abraham wasn't far off. He was willing to do all. He was ready, ready to kill his son that he waited so long for. Isaac, he waited and waited and waited. Unlike Sarah, who didn't want to wait. And she created such a stumbling block. And telling Abraham to go in and sleep with Hagar. Bringing forth the first Muslim, Ishmael. So... Uh, Genesis 22. Let, let's have a look there. Genesis 22. Genesis chapter 22 and... Whoops. And the verse is 1. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son and your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Verse 3. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him. And Isaac said, I should say, and Isaac's son, his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. See that? There's more. There's most of all that Abraham loved God more than his son, more than the one he waited for so long, Isaac. He didn't hate Ishmael, the other son he had, to the mistress, Hagar, he loved Isaac more. But he loved God more than Isaac and Ishmael and Sarah and Hagar. Abraham loved God most of all. Hey? If we fear God, we'll love him most of all. If we love God, we'll love him most of all. If we respect God, we will... Uh, have him as preeminent. It has to be. There can't be even a consideration. We don't even see Abraham considering or 
challenging that it was just as it is written, Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and prepared to go and do what the Lord says. Amen. So all through our message, Jesus the Christ ministry, Paradise Now Church, for 34 years, our message has boiled down to obedience. Loving Jesus first and foremost. And things will will work. Things will be able to be sorted by the Almighty. We won't be living in the past. We would have forgotten. Forget the former things and move on. Otherwise it's going to snare you. You're going to have a blockage in your mind. And it could even lead to bitterness and bad health. Unforgiveness breeds bad health. Sickness. Why? Because who are you not to forgive someone that hurt you when Jesus hung on a tree For you. Who are you? Look, let me tell you, you just your life is just a hand bro compared to God. Your best is vapor. This life is a blink, just a blink to God. <laughs> Who are we not to forgive? We want that natural and spiritual health that God gives. Sweet to the soul, health to the bones, the word of God. Hey, My life gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Not bitter and more bitter, sweeter and sweeter. The man in the street doesn't have to ask for my forgiveness if they abuse me or bash me or spit on me, set me on fire. They don't have to because they walk in darkness, brother. They walk in darkness. They know no different. And the man in the church, they say that I'm a Christian and they do me wrong or they do wrong. They don't have to ask me for forgiveness either. They're just burying themselves in sickness spiritually and naturally because they haven't. Because the Bible says if there's anyone in the church, they have to repent. They have to ask the other person in the church, universal, someone has abused you or uh, uh, verbally or whatever, And they need to go to you if they say they're a Christian and ask your forgiveness. That's Colossians 3.13. You can write that down. You have to forgive your brother and sister as God, as Christ forgave you. How did Christ forgive you? I had to repent. If it's inside the house. So with a holy yell... We cry more, more, more. I want to know more. I want to know more how to serve you, Lord. How you want to be served in spirit and in truth. Amen. Can we see in the writings of the book of Acts, we see the people with all their objects worshipping the unknown God. It meant nothing to God. Objects of worship. He wants obedience. It's better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. When we obey, we show that we respect God. We respect what He asks. Look, I've done this for you. Look, I've done that for you. Did, did I want that? 
If you want to do something, I'll tell you what you can do for me. That'll make me really happy. Amen? I got the message from my wife. I seen something in the shop and I bought it for her. I bought it for her. And I took it home to her and I said, what do you think of that? (laughs) Not bad, eh? And she said, what? And I said, well, what's the matter? I don't really wear that colour. Well, I I learnt quick and saved myself a lot of money. (laughs) There won't be no more of that again. (laughs) Thanks for the tip. (laughs) So I don't bother. I don't bother. Because she likes to buy clothes that she likes. And only she knows, believe me. Only a woman knows. <laughs> Only a woman would know. That's the same with the Lord and our brothers and sisters. You know? Yeah. So we're deconstructing him. We're deconstructing the word more. And, and we're in the M. We're in the M. Let's go to Job. We've got M-O-R-E. So we've probably got a few weeks here. But um, Job. Job. Let's go to Job. The prophet Job. Hey? And we're going to go to Job. Chapter 1. If you like to turn there, you can write these down if you want. A pen remembers more than men. Job chapter 1. I'm going to start reading in verse... ...12. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that Job has is in your power... Only do not lay a hand on the person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Verse 13, Job 1. Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their older, oldest brother's house and a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were ploughing and the donkeys feeding beside them when the Sabians raided them and took them away. Indeed, they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another came. Another messenger came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants. And consume them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, The Chaldeans formed three bands, raided the camels, and took them away, yes, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger came and said, your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their older brother's house and suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house and it fell on the young people and they are dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose, tore his robe and shaved his head and he fell to the ground and worshipped and said, Naked I have come from my mother's womb and naked I shall return there. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> Think about that. You got a rough time with your children? Boy, boy. You got rough time with someone in your family? One of your children are kicking the bucket? They're playing up? I tell you, the Holy Ghost forever brings that to me and says, hey, you ain't got no problems, son. You ain't got no problems. You don't know what problems are. <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy. He didn't mess around taking one of the children here and there. He wiped a lot of them out. The house come down on their head. Oh, I've got problems. Can't come to church this week. i got problems, you know. Mary Lou's kicking the bucket again. Get out of there and get to church. Hear the good news, hallelujah, glad tidings of goodly things that were and are and are to come. And everyone said amen. Amen. Woo! Jesus, son of David. Hey? And what did Job say? I tell you what, he was with a holy yell saying more, 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 more. He didn't blame God. He said, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You just seen what he said. You seen what happened. One message had just finished speaking and another one would come. Bang, 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 bang. Like, that was just like Apollo Creed, you know, hammering Rocky in the corner. Bang, bang, bang. One after the other. And in today's world, people become so weak and so flaky. They hear one bit of bad news and it's, ah, ah. No intestinal fortitude these days in people. The devil's made sure of that. Raising up a mob of gays. Hey? Well, the weaklings today. I'll say it again. You want to deal with the youth, the youth crime crisis? Just bring Nasho back. National service, bring it back. 12 months in the army for everyone. Girls and boys, 12 months in the army. And give it to them well and truly between the eyes. Get some big old burly sergeants in there. You, get over here now. I want 2,000 push-ups in three seconds now. That's what they need. They need to bench press 500 Ks with their teeth. (laughs) And that's before breakfast. Before they do a 300-mile run, full packs, steel boots. You don't hear about it. Pussyfooting round. You're not going anywhere chippy slapping criminals. I thought Mr Morrison knew better. He needs to draw up a plan. Sorry, sorry, no doll. Uh Uh-uh, things have changed. Oh, you're not leaving school and going to work. All right. Okay, and you're not studying, is that right? Well, (laughs) join the army now. And you get paid your doll money in the army. 12 months, 12 months. And then they'll be able to cope when the hard times come, hey? And don't forget to tell all army chaplains to bring forth weekly the born again, must be born again message in all battalions. <laughs> Repent and be forgiven. Hallelujah. So here we are today. Our message today with a holy yell that cried more, more, more in the midnight hour. It's nothing for me in the midnight hour to wake up and say, Lord, 
Lord, Lord, Lord, Lord, Lord. Nothing for me to say. Glory in me sleep. There's nothing for me to say. Hallelujah. Jesus in me sleep. More, more. Holy Ghost possessed. Holy Ghost possessed. Hey? Able to stand in the Euroclidons, the rigors of this wicked world. And there's Joe, mate. Brother Joe. He wasn't blaming God. Oh, what about my grandmother? Yeah, God killed her. Oh, I'm not going to follow Jesus now. Because my grandmother died and she's the one that used to give me the money. So it's not about grandma, it's about the money, isn't it? He took my dad. He was only young. Is it really about dad or is it just about you and the handouts? What was it about? Let's hear the truth. For once in your life, let's hear the truth. Hey? Oh, someone else died or my sister died or my brother died. Oh, I'm not going to follow Jesus because Jesus didn't help him. Because he's a lunatic drunk. That's why. And everyone said? Amen. He's sleeping around with every sheila in town. <laughs> and he spent God's help with that. Hello? Hell? Oh, hello? Hell? Oh. So let's open our Bibles in Hebrews, please. Our message today with the Holy Ghost. More, we want more. They cried more, more, more. In the midnight hour, they cried, Lord, 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 Lord. Hebrews, Hebrews. Hebrews is his brew. Amen. Hebrews 11, real faith chapter this one. Hey? Hebrews 11 verse 24. By faith Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer. Choosing rather to suffer. Affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. Esteeming the reproach of Christ. Greater riches than the treasures that were in Egypt. For he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured. He endured. As seeing him, he endured. As seeing him who is invisible. Well, here's more again. Moses respected God enough to esteem not the riches of heaven, but the, the riches of Christ, the reproach of Christ, greater riches than what was in Egypt. Most of all, see, Moses had it all there, but he, Moses got on his calculator and he said, yes, just to suffer with God's people, just to suffer for Jesus is of more value than all the riches in Egypt. Amen. More value. Not many people would think that. If you say to an individual, do you think it's more value to have $50 million, a mansion, and three racing sports cars? Or is it more value to be set on fire in the street, in public, in Jesus' name? Most people would laugh at you. They'd say, what do you reckon? I would say to be set on fire, it's more value. Amen. As I was. Far more value. As it was for Moses 
to depart from Egypt. I don't want anything to do with them. I want nothing to do with them. You know, Egypt, all through the New Testament, mentioned it's symbolic of the world and the people of the world. The world is, in one word, Egypt. Sin, luxury, wide road, do what you like, think what you like, hurt who you want, it doesn't matter. Your Lord in Egypt. And Moses was Lord in Egypt. He was so much Lord, they were going to make him part of the family. They were going to name him and have him called the son of the Pharaoh's daughter. This was a guy that came out of the reeds. He came out of the swamp. As a baby, no mention of Moses' father. No mention in the Bible. I wonder why. It couldn't have been too flash. But the mother, she ended up getting the best too because she was the mother of the son, the beautiful boy, Moses. But look at his choice. You see? He loved, he loved God. He loved God more, 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 more than everything. And look at the rewards. Moses, then you talk about famous. Moses, look what God used him to do with a stick. With a stick. Put the stick. The stick is the word of God in the New Testament. The stick. That's how you discipline the child with the stick. With the word. The staff is the word of God. Thy rod and thy staff. The the rod is the word of God, I should say. And the staff, the crook, The shepherd's crook is the Holy Ghost. Moses put forth the rod, the stick, and the sea opened. A sea opened up. And people, it was frozen in time. And the people walked across it safely. And then it started to peel back on top of the chariots. Horse and rider thrown into the sea. I tell you what, you can keep your rubies and diamonds. You can keep your golden encrusted chariots of Pharaoh. Hey? I shall sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider thrown into the sea. The Lord, my God, my strength, my shield. He has given me the victory. The Lord is God and I'll exalt him. The Lord is God and I will exalt him. Amen. Moses' song. Horse and rider thrown into the sea. That'd be like walking down to the Gold Coast with your Bible in your hand and point it towards the ocean and it opened up. And all these people were chasing you in the fastest cars and trucks and everything following you with shotguns. And, and they, you went, ran across the sea there and the waters came in on top of them all. How powerful is that? Hey? More, more, more. When we love the Lord, we can't help loving him more and more each day. Because he first loved us. Amen. Amen. Well, that's the M. The M in more. Most of all. Most of all. Hey? Most of all. They're thinking on erecting a statue for Captain uh, Tom in England because he raised 66 million pounds for 
uh, the people who suffered from Corrie V. They're going to put up a statue now. The Queen already knighted him, Sir Tom. Hey? It was, you know, Queen Elizabeth to Captain Tom. <laughs> Take your walker to and keep your hand. And they're going to erect a statue for this guy that raised a lot of, lot of money, walking backwards and forwards in his yard. I really believe there's a spirit behind that one. Sixty-six million dollars, and he, an elderly man. Is it going to save him? He had a saying, and it wasn't scriptural. Captain Tom had a saying, and the saying was, it's going to be a good day tomorrow, or something to that effect. Tomorrow's going to be a bright day or a good day. And I just fell to the ground and scratched my head. And I thought, that was the wisdom gem he learned. Is that going to save anyone? From hell? I mean, it would have been better if he would have said something like, the only way I could have walked backwards and forwards in my backyard was because of Jesus. And let me say to everyone, if you don't repent, you'll burn in hell. I could have, with a holy yell, said more, more, more then. Right? But it's so sad. The Lord gives them uh, extension of days. And that's all they got to say. And then he died. Of Corrie V. Now his last words. To the world. What a waste. The Lord brought him through wars. The Lord brought him through sickness. And then finally. The sickness he was rallying for. Took him. The pale horse. Pounded him. The pluming dust. All around. He... Pale horse hooved him in the end. We don't want to labour in vain, do we? And you know when you labour in vain? When you don't do it in the name of Jesus. When you want the selfish reward yourself. So do this in the name of Jesus, brother. The glory belongs to Jesus, not me. He's the one that told me to do this for you. And if he doesn't tell you to do it, don't do it. It's in vain. Amen? And most people, they're so run down by people, door knocking and handouts, even the salvos, the boxes here, they, they got the box rattling. They got the government giving them millions. They got the knock, knock, knock on the door, red shield. Then they got their church meetings, more money. It's, it's just money, 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 money. Never ends. Where does the money go? Then they got their Red Hill uh, stopovers, and you pay all your money to them if you're on the dole. I was there when I was an alcoholic. They didn't help me. They didn't tell me about Jesus. They fed me. They took my doll money. Gave me a clean bed. They didn't tell me about Jesus, brother. They didn't tell me about Jesus. They didn't say I was hell bound. It took an Aboriginal to tell me about Jesus. That's strange. Black man helping the white man. Always the white man helping the black man. But the black man helped the white man. The Aboriginal instrument, instrumental in saving me from the fires of hell. Because he loved Jesus more. 
then his tradition, his culture, his dream time. He let go of his dream time beliefs and he said it's all garbage. That's what he said. Not me. I didn't say it's dream time's garbage. He said it's garbage. And I believe it. Because he was there. He was in the thick of it as an Aboriginal. And he said it's all garbage. Can't do jack for anyone. Evil spirits. That's what he said. He said you need Jesus. He's the only one we got to help us, brother. Without him you're finished, day. Eh? On your way to hell, eh? I said, yeah, I believe that. Yeah, I've got to go now, eh? Here's my address. Ooh, with a holy yell, I cried, more, more, more. <laughs> In the midnight hour, I cried, Lord, 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 Lord. Amen. So we've done the M on more. We'll proceed with caution next week with the O. Oh dear, that might be a good title. Give you all the glory, Jesus. Everybody said. <laughs>